Before we dive in, here's another show you can enjoy in the True Story FM family of entertainment podcasts. Ever wonder what bridges the gap between your favorite film genres, subgenres, and movements? Cinemascope is here to explore these connections, taking you on a thrilling odyssey through the ever-evolving art of cinema. I'm your host, Andy Nelson, and in each episode, we embark on a deep dive into the forces that sculpt the world of film. From the styles you know and love, like heist films or the French New Wave, to the ones you may not be as familiar with, like Turkish Yeshelcham or Brazilian Nordesterns, my expert guests and I unravel the complex tapestry of storytelling, style, and innovation that defines the world of film as we unpack the myriad catalysts of change that shape these diverse styles. Whether you're a student of film, a creative professional, or simply a devoted movie enthusiast, Cinemascope is your gateway to a richer, more immersive film experience. Don't just watch movies, understand them, appreciate them, and revel in their artistry with Cinemascope. Subscribe today. What's up, Supernatural superfans? I'm Chrissy Lenz. And I'm Nate McWhorter. And we're the hosts of Gang Gang That that drink. Drink. A supernatural drinking game podcast. It's the podcast where we make up drinking game rules for a favorite episode of our favorite show, Supernatural. We recap the episode for you and let you know how all the rules played out. Then we let you know the drinking game rules for the next episode so you can play along. Plus, members get every episode early and ad free. With some extra bonus content chit chat at the end of each episode as a member exclusive. So download Gank That Drink, a supernatural drinking game podcast, wherever the finest podcasts are available. And or become a member at truestory.fm slash gank that drink. And when you're out there in the world saving people and hunting things, you know, the family business. Keep the gank that drink motto in mind. Be excellent to each other and party on. Party on, on dudes. dudes. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Make Me a Nerd, the podcast featuring me, Mandy Kaplan, a mainstream reality junkie TV show loving mom whose mission it is to explore all things nerdy, sci fi, fantasy, comic books, graphic novels, video games, all these things that I have avoided my whole life. This is a journey I have been on for many weeks now. I'm finding so many wonderful new things I didn't know about or just avoided because I thought I wasn't smart enough to keep up. Uh, And I'm not on this journey alone. I have a very exciting guest today to help me on my mission. This is a writer, director, and podcasting legend. He's not going to like that I said that, but wait till you guys hear how this man took the world by storm with a little podcast called How to Destroy Everything. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Darren Grodsky. Oh my God, Mandy, Uh, you are accurate in your assessment. I do not like the podcasting legend, but I guess, you know, uh, thank you. I'll just take the compliment and say thank you. You're too (laughs) humble. Yes. Uh, Well, I mean, we have a podcast that has um, uh, released what, like five episodes at this point. I feel like it's a little early for legendary status, though I am extremely grateful for all the listeners that we have found already. So, um, for those living under a rock, pitch how to destroy everything. Do an elevator pitch for me. Sure. Yes, absolutely. So how to destroy everything is the story of a narcissist who destroyed his marriage, his family, his career, his community, um and so so much more and he was also my best friend's dad um so well we were, pitched, we, uh, Darren. Yeah. oh thank you um um so yeah we we grew up in st louis missouri um back in the the 80s and 90s and um uh i uh, my best friend and i who i also you mentioned i'm a writer and a director i write and direct feature films with him and we've worked together professionally for our entire adult life um, and we were, we've been friends since we were like 
six or something. Um, and so I grew up, you know, observing this man as a kid, though. Um, and the podcast has enabled Danny and I. Danny Jacobs is is uh, my writer, director, um, and podcasting partner. Um, we have, as adults now, revisited his childhood, his father, and all the destruction that he has wrought through the lens of you know maturity and adulthood, and it's been quite an eye-opening, uh, emotional at times, and also kind of hilarious at times journey, I would say. Well, that's because you both bring this perspective of, well, we're, you know, Danny's like, well, I lived through it, so we can joke <laughs> about it, we can, yeah. right? Yes. You, you look yes. at the most horrifying things in history and you make light of them so they'll never happen again, and that's what you guys are doing you personally I think that's right. are absolutely hilarious. You're tonally perfect on the podcast because it's not your story. You're there to guide us, the audience. I'm kind it, of the audience representative. Yes. Yeah, and that's true. And you are true. fantastic I, at it. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We, 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 it's funny you say that about da uh, yeah. Danny, I think, survived that childhood with humor. Um, and we call the podcast like a tromedy, you yes. know, because we kind of want it to feel like Danny's childhood did. So it's like on a weekly basis, you're going to experience um, the the trauma and the, the chaos while also the hilarity, sometimes simultaneously, um, which is, you know, really fun. When, when we are successful at pulling that off, that to me is like when we're hitting the tone exactly where we want to be. And for if anyone hasn't listened, uh, it was like what Apple podcast number one podcast out of the gate or something. It was crazy successful. We released two episodes like a year ago, um, and um, it yeah it did it it just absolutely blew up on us. It I think it rose to be the third ranked podcast in America. Oh, only off of third those two episodes. I know you have I the know. number of the, the first podcaster. I, I you rather... know I think it was um, I think it was the Kelsey brothers at that time uh, about a year ago. They, I'm going to get them overtake. on the show then. Let's <laughs> we just couldn't quite overtake call yeah. this. Um, yeah, absolutely, and get Taylor Swift while you're at it. Um, yeah. But um, uh, we, the problem was that we did not have any more episodes um, at the time. And so we um, and, and to do these episodes. So the episodes are kind of a mix of interviews, um, narrative scenes that are performed with actors, as well as uh, Danny and I sort of talking and sorting through all of it there. They take a long time to produce each of them. And so. For yeah. those of you who are subscribed to Make Me a Nerd, we're going to get a little deeper into this. I yes. want to see how that sausage is made, uh, yes. but you have to be a member to hear that interview at the end of this podcast. So if you're not a member, guys, what are you doing? What are you doing? Join up. Or question join up. everything about your life. Go to makemeanerd.com slash join, where we're actually going to, I want to dive deep into how this really brilliant, riveting podcast is made. Oh, we shall. It's we shall get, dive deep. It's going to get gross. Um but for now, I want to bring us back to the topic at hand, if I may. Yes, indeed. You mentioned being a child of the 80s and 90s. Oh, yes. And what you have selected mm -hmm. is quintessentially 80s and 90s. Oh, but yes. But first, were you a nerd growing up? Were you into sci-fi, fantasy, comics, all of it? So this is, this is a great and interesting question. Um, I've listened to your podcast, which I love. Um, I'm Thank not you. yet a member, but perhaps I, perhaps I should be. I think I will be after a month. this. Like, like Gets all of your listeners. episodes ad free and early, and bonus content. Um, at, well, nice, well, well plugged. Make me a nerd dot com slash join. What were you saying? <laughs> You're good. I, I, I can <laughs> learn from you. You're the podcasting <laughs> legend. Um, so I knew this question was coming. Um, and I was thinking about it, and like, I, I was definitely a nerd. Um, but the way that I, I think I would describe myself is more of an academic nerd um, than a, a like a full-on geek culture nerd. You know, I did not read comics. Um, I did, I, I, I was definitely a movie nerd. So I, uh, but I, there wasn't any one particular um, uh, movie, you know, what we would today call franchise that I was ob completely obsessed with. I, I loved Star Wars, but I wasn't like, insanely obsessed with Star Wars. Um, I loved Back to the Future. That was probably my favorite uh, movie for a long time when I was, you know, in elementary school and middle school. And, and um, but like 
mostly my nerddom was like academically focused, if that makes sense. Um, so definitely a nerd. Uh, yeah, okay. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, yeah, you suggested Back to the Future, but although I I don't consider Back to the Future all that nerdy, that was a complete mainstream phenomenon, and I've seen them all many, many times. So we didn't choose that. You chose Quantum Leap. Quantum Leap, baby. Oh, yes. So I mean... <laughs> So a, a couple a couple of thoughts. So it's interesting that we 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 did discuss Back to the Future. I brought up Back to the Future because obviously time travel is a common denominator in both um, both Back to the Future and Quantum Leap. And I I, I think that time time travel has long been uh, an obsession of mine. Um, in the sense of, I was thinking about this when rewatching some of these episodes. I, I feel like time travel really is as a storytelling device um obviously there's all kinds of fun intellectual uh aspects to it fun little like twists you can have on changing history but i just think it's such a great device for achieving emotion i think of like time travel as pure emotion i agree entirely and watching this it was a great vehicle. Sam is going to drop into different places and stories mm -hmm. and affect change in people's lives. But it reminded me, stay with me, of Fantasy Island or mm. any of these shows where they come to the island ready to end their marriage, they fall mm -hmm. back in love, or they come to the yes. island in grief and they find something that you know pulls them out of it. You just have to have that hook. And then you yes. can have these truly emotionally charged, beautiful stories. Yes. And that's, Absolutely. I did not really know Quantum Leap was going to be so emotional, honestly. Yeah. And I, I think I had forgotten that it was so emotional um, until revisiting it. I mean, because it's funny, because if I, if I had looked back on it, I would have said, oh, time travel is cool. And um, again, back to me being an academic nerd, I ended up studying history in college. So mm -hmm. I always loved that there's a historical aspect to quantum leap you know the, mm -hmm. obviously the premise is he leaps into all these different times throughout his own lifetime he cannot leap earlier than when he was born oh okay um and but still i mean they over the course of the show you know he, there's a lot of major historical events that he ends up impacting um so i think that the show was like tickling a lot of interests of mine yeah. without even realizing it but i had forgot you know as a filmmaker um and a writer I'm very much drawn to the the sort of character based emotion, mm -hmm. um, and uh, Danny and I actually have a time travel script that we're very much hoping to uh, make at some point soon. Which, if I would just, it's it's one of these kind of like, again, like there's a lot of sci fi dressing on it, but like yeah. at its core, it's a deeply emotional of story. Course. And yeah, that was a revelation I think in revisiting Quantum Leap. Yeah, and. You ch the first episode you chose was called Future Boy, which really yes. was a Back to the Future ripoff. It absolutely I was. was. Yeah. Yes, I was yes. getting Back to the Future feel all over the place. He goes back in time um, to a TV show, which also was reminiscent of when Rose Nyland fell in love with a guy who had his own kids TV show, Golden Girls. Oh, Anyone? No. Uh, I mean, I've seen Golden Girls, but not uh, that was a deeper cut than I'm capable of yes. uh, grasping. Yes, Mr. Fantastic. But uh, so he goes back and drops in. He's the sidekick on this TV show. And the guy who has the TV show is mm -hmm. about to kill himself. Yes. And he's there to stop him. Yes, exactly. How am I doing so far? I got it. This so, is great. Yeah. So the guy's name is Mo Stein. And Mo Stein, it, everyone thinks Mo Stein is crazy because he's trying to invent time travel. Mo mm -hmm. Stein is basically Doc Brown. And yes. he brings him down to the basement and shows him the time travel machine. There's even a capacitor. Yes, there is. That's right. <laughs> and the pitch for this episode must have been, what would have become of Doc Brown if Marty McFly had never found him? Oh, that's interesting. You know, it's funny because I, I, had, I had the thought that uh, the character that Dr. Sam Beckett leaps into Future Boy is kind of a Marty-ish character, but you're right because he's not in that he's not really, obviously he's, uh, Sam does the opposite of what Marty did. Sam is there to, um, to stop him from going off the deep end. 
Right. And it's not Sam's story. He's only there to serve Mo Stein. Exactly. I, w- I would also add that, like, I think you're right. The other part of the pitch is, and what if Doc had been a fraud, basically? You know, he's, or at least a partial fraud, because they do this other interesting thing in this episode in which, um, obviously, we know that Sam Beckett has successfully invented time travel. And they do this thing where Mo has sort of almost got it. Like, he's he's half the way there in terms of what whatever this quantum leap theory uh, uh, is, he's kind of there. There's even a moment when he like almost leaps for a second. And so there's a little bit of like, oh, he was so close, but not quite. Yeah. And I wouldn't say he's a fraud. He's a dreamer and he he just can't get it done, but he believes what he's doing. So yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Um, do you know if if the quantum leap thing is based on any real science I looked it up and it said a quantum leap is an abrupt change, sudden increase or dramatic advance. Oh, wow. Gosh. Um, I don't know if it is based on real science. I always one of the things I always liked about quantum leap was that um, it the obviously there are some time travel stories that get themselves tied up in knots in terms of trying to explain the the whether it's the science of it or the sort of the 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 implications of changing the past. Quantum Leap doesn't get too complicated with that. Um, I always just thought the Quantum Leap of it all was a kind of, um, you know, not exactly a MacGuffin, but just like a, a thing we all accept. Um, and, uh, but I mean, look, it, it has the word quantum in it. Uh, that, that seems, that seems scientific. That Physic-y. seems legit. Yeah. Yep, yeah, certainly. So maybe, maybe, I'm sure, you know, there's probably some element of ninth, late 1980s research that they put in there to give it some verisimilitude. Um, but uh, I don't know. I don't you know. You don't get I, extra I don't know points for large words, Darren. Oh, I'm okay. Darn it. How no. do you get points in this thing? <laughs> you flatter me. A doy. Oh, well, <laughs> all right. Noted. Um, so who is Dean Stockwell in this show? Because this you picked episode from third season. So I was a little like, and no one else can see Dean Stockwell. Stockwell, he's a hologram. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So yeah, I was I was watching that, and I was wondering how you were going to uh, process the. You know, uh. they do they, <laughs> they do a nice thing um, it in the opening of Quantum Leap, which is they have uh, a, a wonderful voiceover actor. I don't know who she is, um, with, very emotionally telling us the premise of the show. And I remember hearing that on a weekly basis. I was you know, going to ask, each does she ever become a character? Leap, no. Like why? As far who as I can she? recall, no. Yeah, I don't. It's 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 a very specific voice. That it's you know what I mean. Like it does not feel like announcer voice. Um, That's why I thought it was going to be like, oh, turns out she invented it with him and died, or she like you know that at some point we would learn who this character is. I, I don't. I'm pretty confident we do not. You know, Quantum Leap um, is, I believe in my life, the only show that I watched from start to finish on a regular basis when it aired. Um, like, uh, I, uh, may, maybe Succession actually is now the second. Um, although I think I missed the first season of Succession. I had to ca- catch up on that. But like, I remember, I believe it was on Wednesday nights, watching Quantum Leap with my parents every Wednesday um, and 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 desperately waiting for the show to start back in the days when we had to wait, you know, for it to actually air and sit through commercials. In fact, um, the, the, I'm pretty sure one of the reasons I chose the Future Boy episode is I have this memory of watching this episode. And um, I don't know what grade I would have been in, like third or fourth grade. And I had like a kind of a girlfriend uh, at the time. And she called um, cause the extent of our relationship would have been that we would have like maybe talked on the phone. Right. Um, you know, your uh, corded like phone. Minutes. Yes, exactly. My yep. corded phone. Yes. And she called during, I believe this episode, because I also remember that this episode was set in St. Louis, which was a big deal for a St. Louis kid. Um, and she, I remember it was like a commercial break. And so I went and, and I said, Hey, and, uh, I was kind of in a rush to get back. Cause again, I couldn't pause the live television. And so I was like, well, you know, what, what's up? And I remember that she said, I'm bored. <laughs> uh, and I remember just being like, oh, I, I, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm watching Quantum Leap. I basically ended the call really quickly. And that ended the relationship. It so, sure did. And I don't blame uh, her. 
Yep. You know, she, she, that was the right move she made. And, but I don't regret it either. I needed to see this episode because God knows when I would have been able to see it again, you know, in syndication years later. Um, but anyway, <laughs> um, I can't oh, believe Al. you have you such me about a, vi Al. a vivid memory like that. Yeah. Al is what to him? My memory of the, the premise of the show. And by the way, if you go back and watch the pilot, this is not really explained. It, okay. it, it, this all sort of comes out in exposition over the course of episodes. But um, uh, Dr. Sam Beckett invented this. There is a computer. Uh, he keeps referring to it as a hybrid computer, which I don't know what that means exactly, uh -huh. uh, named Ziggy. Yeah. Um, that does a lot of calculations about what it is exactly that Sam Beckett is supposed to be doing. Um, it's a, it's like a smartphone, but it looks like, did your kids play with mag formers or mag tiles? Mag oh, little, yes. yes. Right? Yes. The plasticky things that are see-through right. and the neon different colors. colors. Yeah. Yes. That's what Ziggy looks exactly. like. It's hilarious. And uh, yeah, you're right. It's, but it, it was. It was like an a, a early prototype for what they imagined smartphones might be like in the future. Right. Um, there is someone named Gushy, who is a person back in 1990, whatever this is set. I don't know when the present day exactly is, if, it's, if uh -huh. it's like the present day of the 80s and 90s. And then there's Al, played by Dean Stockwell, who is a part of the Quantum Leap team. Um, Al is a friend of Dr. Beckett's. Okay. He's uh, an older gentleman. He's... Uh, uh, hornier than I than I remember. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, for, I, there's, I, there's some me too stuff happening in that. Oh boy, episode. yeah. Like yeah. I forgot that that was sort of the joke about his character was that he has had like multiple wives and um, is constantly you know ogling uh, attractive women, even if they may be underage in occasional episodes. Um, so that was and a little he's awkward. A real schnazzy dresser. He's a very very schnazzy. In this one, he was wearing. If I say Gordon Gartrell, do you know that reference? From the Cosby no. show when Theo oh, wants a Gordon yes. Gartrell and Denise makes him one. And I mean, this was yellow and patchworked it's and <laughs> it's very bold. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and Dean Stockwell, I mean, it's funny. I would later, um, as a film nerd, go on to see uh, Paris, Texas, which became one of my favorite movies for a while and um, other great Dean Stockwell work. And it's funny having seen him in reverse, like if I had seen Paris, Texas first. Well, if I'd seen that as an eight-year-old, I think I would have hated that movie. But um, uh, seeing him in Quantum Leap now, after having seen a lot more other work, I was reminded of how much fun he is as a character. Like, it's an interesting... Um, uh, the Sam Beckett character is very, very sincere. Yes. You know, he is... He's kind of Superman-ish, um, right? Like, he... We'll get into one of the episodes later where he has some real internal conflict, but most of the time he's just like, okay, I got to help people. Here I am. And kiss people. And kiss people. Yes, he definitely gets I think it could have been called The Kissing Show. <laughs> I think they missed an opportunity. Uh, that, that's a great the title. The opening credit sequence is just him kissing different women with feathered hair. It's very true. Um, yeah. But the Al character is a bit of comic relief and just, you know, in uh, in, in in the in the sort of nerd world, almost like the Han Solo to Sam's Luke Skywalker, right? Just, uh, again, a little uh, uncomfortably horny uh, for modern sensibilities, but like fun and irascible and um, their dynamic, I think, is really great. And yes, he's a hologram because he, he exists back in the present day of the show okay. and can appear oh, I to got Sam I gotcha. as a hologram. And there's this, who like, Sam talks portal. to, but nobody else can see him. And yes. now we're in the third season and Sam still hasn't figured out a better way to do that so that people don't go, who are you talking to, man? He's pretty bad at that. You're right. It's he is. really strange. Yeah, yeah. You would think he would have mastered. They'd have a system. Yeah. You'd think there'd be some... <laughs> Morse code. Yeah. I, mean, I don't he, know. He tries to occasionally get, get off to a different room somewhere, but, he, but not always. You're right. A lot of times he doesn't. He's just like, I'm going to talk to Al. It's like, you're right. He forgets. You would think after three seasons, he would no longer forget right. that only he can see Al. But, right. um, you know, they say they do this thing about his brain being his memories being like Swiss cheese, they call it. And maybe that's a part of the Swiss cheese memory is that he forgets every time that only he can see Al. Oh, oh, look at you justifying. I'm making it up. I don't know what I'm saying. I know. I don't want to get into an argument with you, though. That was pretty good. Okay, thank you. So this whole episode is about this Mostein guy whose daughter's basically trying to have him committed because he's 
a danger to himself because he believes he can create time travel. So he's acting erratically and, and all of that. It's a, you know, without getting too deep with the conversation about mental health these days and the stigma about it, it is an, a powerful episode where, you know, you question, well, should someone like this be locked up or should someone like this be free or why doesn't the daughter take care of him or should she have to? And yes. then this bizarre speech happens. His mm -hmm. time machine fails and he makes this beautiful speech about how he regrets being an absentee father to his daughter because he was always trying to better himself and do all of these things. But why couldn't he have said that at the beginning of the episode? It was so strange. Well, that strange. wouldn't have been a very interesting episode if he had I said know, that at the start. But <laughs> that's the yeah. kind of thing where I, I roll my eyes a bit. Oh, you know? yeah. He could For have sure. been saying, listen to me, honey, listen, I, I'm sorry, I made mistakes. And she could have said, I'm not going to listen. You're crazy. I'm not talking to you. I'm just trying to get you committed. You're 100% right. Yeah. You know, one of my takeaways from revisiting Quantum Leap was I was reminded that to its credit, this is a show that was tackling some kind of heady material and some really complex issues for its time. I mean, we didn't watch any of them, but there are issues that deal with civil rights and there are issues that deal with um, all kinds of social issues that are still relevant today, which is amazing for a broadcast network drama circa 1989. Um, but it is still a broad broadcast network drama circa, you know, late 80s, early 90s. And so there is kind of like a, um, oh, a, a saccharine, overly yes. simplistic, you know, resolution to this stuff. Yes. yes. That certainly appealed to my Midwestern sensibility um, as a nine-year-old. Oh, you know, God, love you. Yeah. Darren. But, um, but, but, but so, you know, I, I both give it credit and also am with you and being like, oh, because it doesn't have to be that way. You're right. There, there's another way to do it that could absolutely still work and be really interesting. It's a um, problem I have with network TV today too, though, to be honest. Yes. I don't watch procedurals. I don't care for that the idea that everything gets wrapped up in a neat bow at the very end but that's my taste a huge swath of the country loves it and a lot of them disagree with us but i'm, I'm with yes. you yeah so um i want to get back to you to nine-year-old darren but first i want to say the very end of this episode was such a fun emotional twist yes that future boy gets a letter or did mo stein get a letter yeah, I guess is I think it's most Stein, right? Yes. From, from young Sam Beckett. A young Sam Beckett, exactly. Who Ugh. Yeah, that that's a great example of the fun that they had in terms of the time travel of it all. Because obviously there's a, the the show is sort of intimates that Sam Beckett got his idea of time travel, the scientific component of it, from you know, most Mo Stein, right? Right. Is, is that his name? Stein? He was, um, yes. And yeah, he was that, inspired like he, by him to become yes. who he became. And he builds from that. And that's so fun and satisfying. And obviously the whole show, Sam is our protagonist. He's not just a vessel. And he himself is wrestling with, you know, this, the, the fact that Mo is kind of onto something. And like Sam wants to support his dreaming you know him being a dreamer um but because sam himself is and was a dreamer and so funny it's that wonderfully you're, now you're into the third episode and i'm not gonna let you go there but yeah yeah, yeah. you may say that i'm a dreamer well that's a that's, that's a teaser yes it was such when when the letter was from young sam i grabbed my heart and it was mm. really satis you said satisfying i think it it was uh really heartfelt really great wistful moment and then he disappears in the light and he's Disco Zorro. Yes. And I was like, what the <laughs> hell? <Disco Zorro. laughs> what just did, did my oh, yeah. Hulu crap out or it wasn't Hulu, it was Amazon Prime. But what uh -huh. what am I looking at? And then I realized, oh, they tease. Is yes. that always the next Every episode? Every week. That's right. Every week ends with him leaping into the next episode. You get about, you know. 30 seconds to a minute and a half of context to understand what it is. And then every single week, Scott Bakula as mm -hmm. Sam Beckett says, Oh boy. Okay. I'm, I'm not kidding. That was it every single time. And one of the ones that I remember the most um, is at one point he leaps into a rabbi um, and he says, 
oh boy, I'm the rabbi. And I, 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 I think- He didn't say oy vey? No, he didn't say oy vey, which is a huge missed opportunity. And secondly, I wonder if the writers or the network, they were like concerned that audiences aren't going to know what this what a rabbi what, is. What, he, what, what he is, right? So yeah. I think they were like, because almost never did he say anything in addition to oh boy. But I think they had to add that, um, yeah, to, to make it clear that he was the rabbi. And by the way, one interesting production note that I have, and I don't know the answer to this. Please. They did this at the end of a season too. So like you'd, you'd be watching in May or whenever the season would end and he would leap into, um, you know, the, 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 the first episode of the next season, which wouldn't air until September back in the day when I used, you know, I guess that still exists in network shows. And so I, I don't know, I, maybe they, they knew they were renewed and they had already done the first episode um, of the next season, but like, or maybe they just did a little bit of it. I, I don't know. I always wondered uh, how that worked exactly. Cause um, uh, you know, months go by until we had to wait for that episode right. to come out. Well, I was on, uh, you know, like a fan site that did trivia and behind the scenes stuff. So you could probably you find are that a nerd out now. It's fantastic. I really try, but I, love I also, I mean, this is the sad truth. People film their first season and leave it in the cliffhanger and then they don't get picked up. Well, and, right. And we're just left to wonder that just happens all the time now. So maybe they just filmed that minute. And if they didn't get picked up, they wouldn't have aired it or yes. they just aired it and hoped they got picked up. And if it just got left as a dangling Chad, it was just there to dangle. That's probably true. Yeah, you're yeah, I, I, I would suspect you're right. But this tease that they do at the end, the oh boy, mm -hmm. is so smart. And it's what Real Housewives does mm -hmm. to bring it back into my world, right? Mm -hmm. Coming mm -hmm. up. And then we see you bitch slap slap. And we're like, oh, I can't Gotta wait to know next what week. happened there. Right. Yes. It's so smart. And can't remember which episode it so it's the next episode we watched i just have to get it off my chest he mm -hmm. ends up as oswald lee harvey oswald that's right yeah. which is okay. a fantastic tease obviously so i am a jfk conspiracy nerd oh yeah theorist mm -hmm. like to the extreme i got chills from head to toe i didn't mm. get to watch it yet because i because i'm very busy and important and i could only Absolutely. watch three episodes of television but um because the Golden Bachelorette is on. I, Darren, I have other stuff. I understand. But um, but oh my God, to see him drop into the the infamous picture of yes. Oswald in his yard with the gun, I can't wait to see that one. So, question: At what point in that did you realize? Like, did you know right away? Yes, he, I heard that, a Russian esque that, accent saying "Lee" yeah, yeah, yeah. or so, you yeah, know, yeah. You stand knew that. still, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I was like, oh, oh, I know where yep. we are. White t shirt. I, I mean. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's a really, I, I had forgotten about that episode until I saw that tease. And then it's funny how these things, they flash back into your mind. And I, I remember that being a very good episode. And often, you know, you know, you, you know what you want that episode to be, right? Um, stop, right? Uh, stopping the assassination. But what Quantum Leap often did really, really well was taking an iconic moment of history, uh, either like American history or in case, some cases, which we'll get into the personal histories of the characters in the show mm -hmm. and doing it slightly askew. So it's not the thing that we or they want, but it of course ends up incorporating that into the story often really elegantly. And that, that I do think holds up. Nicely. Very similar to Dr. Who. Yes, that's true. Huh? Look which, who pre, just which obviously predated that Look, out you, there. you make Dr. Who references now. This is, this is, you're, 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 you're crushing it. It's happening. I, f I mean, I feel nerdier every day. It's really happening. <laughs> what does that feel like? <laughs> well, on the visceral It feels level, like, a, like... like just a wedge slowly creeping up <laughs> the back of my pants. That sounds terrifying. Um, Depends. But, yeah, you know. Yeah. By the way, um, one uh, question I have for you. Um, I, one of the episodes that I listened to of your delightful podcast was the Watchmen episode. And then I think I listened to another one. Must have been after that. Oh, it was The Last Starfighter, and you said that you started watching the Watchmen TV series on HBO, which I'm a huge fan of. Um, I'm curious if you watched more of that or if you have not. Not yet. I uh, need to get enough. a cold to have ah. the time to commit, you know? You should come hang out in my house. My okay. kids will be glad to give you 
<laughs> the cold that they always have. So uh, yes, uh, I will because sometimes I wish for it, and I and I want to watch more of The Watchmen. I, and we also ran out of HBO. This is all too personal, but uh, you know, we can our max. If you want, but I was curious. Yeah, yeah. No, no, um, no. Um, but I really, I did love that first episode. So it's you. You got the vibe from that first episode, and it is just it's obviously very different it's a totally different time period from the graphic novel and the, mm -hmm. the movie um but boy they i don't think you'll be disappointed i think yeah. that they just crushed it and it's so great. relevant uh it's fantastic great great well thank you for supporting my mission here here so then we are on to episode two which was season four episode 22 a leap for lisa Yes, we're bouncing. We're bouncing around. Yeah. Yeah. And now I saw Future Boy in the opening credits. So I felt like a real pro. <laughs> That's true. Yep. I'd like to point out to everyone listening that Darren has two beverages. I do. Two I do. different I have... beverages, a Coke Zero and an, and an ice cold and water. water. Uh huh. Here's the thing. Yeah. Um, I, I need my, my, I don't drink coffee and I, I do have two small children. So I do need caffeine in the afternoon and that's my, my Coke Zero. However, I find that if I only drink uh, soda, uh, I don't like the way that I feel. Uh, I feel maybe dehydrated, I guess. Okay. And so I often will chase it with good ice cold know. water, which I drink throughout the day. This is this is good content, right? This is I why. Well, uh, <laughs> I'm not a big water drinker, and I'm always fascinated oh. by people who have multiple. You know, I see a cup of tea, and then a water, and mm. then a kombucha, and I'm like, okay, then what's going on over there with all your beverages? So. Do, what do you drink like most often or more regularly? Gin. All right. Well, that's that's there's water in there. Oh, um, okay. Then I so. guess I am a big water drinker. There you go. So a, a leap for Lisa. Mm -hmm. Your nine year old self sitting with your parents. Mm -hmm. You're, maybe there's some popcorn on the couch. Oh yeah, my dad often would make popcorn um, uh, for our quantum leap viewing. It's funny you should say that. So yes. Yeah. And then uh, instantly. He is accused of rape and murder. Yes. And the whole episode is about rape and murder and very dark fetishes that this lady might have about getting Oof. abused, physically abused and raped. Shocking. Shocking for me now as a man in my 40s. I can't imagine what, uh, maybe I was 10 or 11, but this was what you say, season four? Um, season four. Like, uh, yeah, so you so, were well versed God. in rape and murder. <laughs> I, well, for sure. Well, listen, a child of the 80s. Come on. Have you seen 80s movies? Like we all were well versed in. Uh, I mean, Back to the Future, yeah. you know, uh, um, right? Marty McFly intimates that he's going to rape his mother. Uh, I mean, it's uh, it's there's there was darkness back in those yeah. days. But yeah. but you're right about yeah that the the fetish that this uh, this woman and her husband may or may not have was kind of shockingly disturbing for a, bro a network broadcast drama. Yeah, I wrote, <laughs> that, this that probably is prime time. This is NC-17. Did kids really watch this show? I was- 100%. Yeah, I absolutely watched it with my adult. parents. Extremely. Wow. Uh, I mean, it, the, the, the episode opens with um, uh, a an homage to From Here to Eternity. From Here to Eternity, yes. Right. Speaking of kissing, making out on the beach in, in what is, you know, I mean, it's not, uh, that is not NC seventeen, but is pretty like like it's a it's a very passionate uh, embrace. Yes, um, that there's even dry that, humping. You can say that my show is absolute NC dry humping. Yeah, and I mean again, my I was sitting there with my parents watching that, yeah. all just nodding and munching, munching on our popcorn. Um, mm -hmm. So different times. I, I know guess, uh, it. It was really adult. The content. It was a great yeah. episode for many reasons, but I just kept thinking, wow. This is not for kids. No. So he's in the military. Yes. And he wakes up and he's being put on trial for raping and murdering someone's wife, his That's right. superior officer's wife. I also thought just as a small fun thing at the opening, he leaps into a dream. He leaps into the right. person who he leaps into and that person is having a dream and then wakes up from that dream and... I, they sort of intimate this in the episode that this isn't had never happened before, and I, I also loved stuff like that. The mm -hmm. just the fun things that would happen over the course of seasons of the ways that you could play with this concept, right? Um, and um, at the same time, it's also a little bit of a cheat, obviously, because that thing that would have been teased in the previous episode wasn't real; it was wasn't just a dream. real. So, yeah, 
Right. Well, big twist coming. Oh, yeah. He's actually inhabiting Al. Yes, indeed. So the He's reason I should say uh, that I selected these three episodes and then you asked me what order you should watch them in, and I, I said in this order, was I, I felt like Future Boy was a good example of a sort of like classic Quantum Leap episode where there's a, like, you know, th the themes are interesting and... You know, there's obviously something personal in the time travel element for Sam, but it's it's mostly just like helping someone. That and it's is pretty unrelated. standalone. It's I didn't, pretty standalone. Yeah, yes. I didn't need to know that he was from the Midwest or, you know. I, yes, I, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Um, and then this one, A Leap for Lisa, um, you said the season four, is that right? Mm -hmm. Season four. There, there are multiple times in the show in which he leaped into Al. I think, I don't remember if this is the first or not, but like. Here now they're really playing with the format in terms of these characters because he is now leaping into, you know, there there are only two recurring, like series regulars in the show, right? It's Sam Beckett and Dean, Dean Stockwell, so he's leaping into Al, and that was so satisfying um, as a viewer to see. Oh my God, it's Al! Like it's one of the only two people that we actually really know. Um, right. You know, time right. travel stories, you want that kind of stuff. You of want course. circular things and things to come back. And it's hard to do when there's there's only two people. But, you know, th this is one of the times they did it. And I agree with you. I think it's a really fun episode. I don't know how it how much it landed for you as since this was your second episode. You know, if you had watched 20 episodes of getting to know Al and then suddenly there's young Al. It might have landed harder, but I don't know. No, it landed because it became clear what the stakes were for Al and, and you know, this girl who ends up dying, Lisa, and then they can save her. And they use the gimmick in every episode is he looks in the mirror and he can see who, who he's leaped into. Yes. And this time it's Jamie Walters from 90210. Oh, God. He, You're right. He roughed up Donna Martin and threw her down the stairs. I thought I recognized that actor. I was so taken by the fact that he didn't look that much like Dean Stockwell to me. That's what I was thinking about. Right. <laughs> and then, but yeah. he sounded just like Dean Stockwell. Yes. So I had to yes, look it up. They dubbed Dean Stockwell's voice. Oh, Not that's, that's awkward. all that hard to do to find an actor who can talk like this, right? <laughs> that's very true. That's I, very true. I, what I was is, like, what a why do they go to the trouble of dubbing <laughs> instead of just lining up 30 kids with greasy hair and seeing which one can do an impression. I bet that kid could have done it. I mean, how hard is it really? Like uh, you don't really need the Dean Stockwell rasp. Also because you're right that they he sounded like a like a 55 60 year old man as opposed to like a 21 year old kid. A voice Version, has changed uh, yeah, over time. Right. Yeah. Um, um they were afraid they the audience else. wouldn't wouldn't understand this is really Al is. unless he had Al's distinctive voice. So they dug. Gotta have Al's it was, voice. I thought it was a. There, first of all, there's a lot of bad ADR on the show, not to be a snob, but there are no, no, tons right. of times when they're talking and the words coming out of their mouths are not what their mouths are saying. They just went 100%. back and post and made up a new scene or a new moment. But I'll forgive it. But yep, let Jamie yep, Walters. No, you're absolutely right. Free Jamie Walters. I feel bad for that for, you know, like uh, you get this, this, there, there are a lot of like recognizable actors, even in the three episodes that we watched, like people I've seen and other stuff. And it's, so it's a big deal to get on a show like Quantum Leap and they won't even let him use his voice. That's a right. bummer. Yeah. Something else though, I, I, I liked about this episode was that when Sam leaps into a person, that person essentially leaps into the present the day of the room. show and exactly so there's a waiting room um which in the vast majority of quantum leap episodes we never see or have access to this was the first time we saw the waiting room i looked it up uh, oh it, okay i was wondering if, if, if you, you mm -hmm. know more than i do so that was extremely satisfying after three plus seasons of build up to see the waiting room um and 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 um and little hints we always wanted hints of what was going on in the present day who was gushy what does ziggy the the main frame version of ziggy look like you know what is the 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 future or the present um and so it was great that they found a dramatic reason to take us in there um you know as opposed to just randomly one episode being like well let's just see what it what it looks like no, it, it, it really worked. And I read like people went nuts because they finally saw the waiting room. 
So yes, definitely. I think Scott Bakula is a very good actor and very charming. Mm -hmm. And we're going to, we're going to talk about that voice. He was nominated for four Emmys as best lead actor. Hmm. I found that shocking. I did not know that. Yeah. This doesn't seem like an award baiting kind of show. I agree. Although I will say that in the eighties and nineties, you know, there wasn't really <coughs> cable television. Right. What else uh, was like on? Would, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like there was yeah. no this is pre Sopranos and pre, um, you know, prestige TV. Like this kind of was an elevated show, Com you know, because it is a procedural kind of, but it's not a cop procedural. Um, and it's I mean, very been, well like, done and high blues. budget and the effects were great. And the, you know, they, the locations, they went all out for Quantum Leap. Which is crazy when you think about it, right? Because television is supposed to be cheaper because you just have the same locations over and over again and the same actors. But that's not the case with this. Different actors every week and different locations. It had to be an expensive show. Yeah, it it seems like it. But I agree with you. He, I mean, look, he, he, he pulls off the sincerity, I will say, I think really well. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't feel like... Yeah, like certainly by today's standards, you would not say, you know, you wouldn't maybe put his performance up there with like Jeremy Allen White in The Bear um, and say Scott Bakula. Sure. Though I loved him. By the way, Scott Bakula, also from St. Louis. So warm is place he? in my heart. He is. Well, I have a Scott Bakula story. Are you ready? Oh, yes, absolutely. Back in my acting days, I booked a guest star on a TV show called Men of a Certain Age with Ray Romano uh -huh. and Scott Bakula. Mm -hmm. And I was on set and they said, go off to the makeup trailer. And I said, sure. And I went and I sat down and in walks Scott Bakula and sits next to me and could not have been more gracious. He's like, hi, mm. my name is Scott. It's really nice to meet you. What, what are you doing today? And we talked for an hour next to each other. Oh, and wow. Yeah. He had no ego, no air Aww. about him. Like I'm Scott goddamn Bakula. Yeah. And I I'm like to pretend I show. don't know who people are. That's just, uh -huh. I don't want to say, oh, I'm a big fan or, oh, I know you. I just let it go. Um, but I will always have a soft spot, St. Louis soft spot for Scott Bakula because he just made me feel like I was his equal. Oh, my God. I love stories like that because yeah. obviously we often hear the opposite. Um, right. But that's so nice that he, yeah, because obviously we <laughs> we know of actors who would be at that level and would, wouldn't even give you the time of day. As Danny Jacobs who is who I'm Danny assuming Jacobs you're referring to. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. You said it and, and you know. And he I heard it. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I have to say one more thing about Elite for Lisa that I, that, I, that I just thought of, which I thought was wonderful. Because of Sam in this episode, uh, Al is in danger of being executed for this crime. Right. Yes. And the Ziggy computer is calculating the odds as it mm -hmm. often does. And there's a wonderful scene in which the odds are increasing by the second, 88%, 92%, 95, 97, 99. And then there's a beat of silence and we don't see Al. And suddenly there's a new voice, which is Roddy McDowell. Oh, right. Yep. <laughs> and, and, and you realize as the, in the audience that, oh my God, Al Al's was put to death gone. and he's gone. Yeah. And so the the whole sort of, you know, the present day world gets flipped there yeah. for a chunk of the show where Roddy McDowell has replaced Dean Stockwell. Inspired casting, I thought, by the way, yes. just a wonderfully different flavor for mm -hmm. that character. Sam doesn't like him. He calls him Samuel. Um, and uh, I just thought was, that was great, again, time travel storytelling. So well And done. a lot of the Swiss cheese comes up there, too, about yes. for Sam. Like, well, maybe I had it wrong and I thought I was working with this other guy and... Right. He's, yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. No. Good point. I liked that episode, but I loved the next one. So that's why I'm like, yes. it's yeah, yeah. Let's get, get into to it. a leap home mm -hmm. season three, episode one. Basically, Sam Beckett wakes up and he's himself as a 16 yes. year old boy in Indiana, Iowa, someplace um, with a lot of corn. Indiana. I believe Indiana. Yeah. And he hears his mother on the porch saying, Sam come home for dinner and he runs up to the porch and he says mom and i i'm crying now yeah yeah it's uh this is I, what i meant when i said uh, that time travel is pure emotion because uh, like 
the and th- I knew what, as soon as we talked about Quantum Leap, I knew that I wanted to talk about this episode mm-hmm. because to me, and this this speaks to Back to the Future or you know almost all the great time travel stories. Like, what is the point of time travel if not to go back? And talk to your parents mm-hmm. when they're young and or your alive. Little if, sister, I mean, and your oh, little sister. Yeah, no, it's she it's, was such um, a good actor. I didn't write her name down, but she was so good. Well, that scene when he sings um, John Lennon's "Imagine," which you re- referenced earlier, I'm getting the chills now just thinking back on it because the evolution on her face as she's a huge Beatles fan and he's decided to tell his family about the future, including that the Beatles are going to break up and John Lennon is going to go on and write this song. And then he performs it for her. And you see her go from like bemused, you know, disbelief to hearing the song, which obviously is also thematically on point um, and like kind of recognizing that it's a brilliant song and that John Lennon absolutely could have written it. And it's all on her face. And how old is she? She's like 12, 12. It's an incredible performance. I agree with you. She should have won the Emmy for, for that, for that, extraordinary yeah. um and that's how we know the show is high budget because they had to shell out to use imagine oh that's a great point yes that was not cheap no in future boy scott bacula sings momentarily in a goofy way as future boy and i cocked my head like this darren and i mm-hmm. thought oh that's a singer scott bacula must be a very good singer mm-hmm. and he's trying to mm-hmm. pretend he's just an average guy And then when he sang Imagine, his voice was gorgeous. He knocked it out of the park. He did. Yeah. Just to prove our computers and our phones are always listening. I got served up an ad for a cabaret fundraiser he's doing where he's singing with his son. Like as I was watching this thinking, (laughs) oh, he's a trained singer. He's Wow. I I would love to hear him sing more. Yeah. In my brain, I thought that. And my phone felt it. Yeah. He is. He does have a beautiful voice. That's so funny. I did not know uh, that he's out there performing with his son. Um, Are you going to go? You're going to go check out the performance? I didn't even write it down. As I said, (laughs) I'm very busy and important because the Golden Bachelorette. But so he's he's in Indiana in his small town. His brother's about to go off to Vietnam. His dad is going to die from heart disease. And he feels he can prevent these things from happening. His brother's going to die in Vietnam. I don't know if I said that. Not just going off to war, but going to die. And he's confusing his... I don't know why he was dropped in there, if not to fix these things. But Dean Stockwell keeps saying, you can't mess with it. Just let your brother go. Yeah, one of the great lingering mysteries of the show is what the hell is going on here? (laughs) You know, meaning like... There's some, at one point, I think he yells to God or the universe or time or they, they they always left it vague in terms of like, who's in charge of this? Why Mm -hmm. is he being sent to all these places? Yeah. You know, the computer obviously is able to calculate the likelihood of what he's supposed to do. And then when he does it, he leaps to the next place. Um, I will say, by the way, that when the series ends, they attempt to answer some of these questions and it's it's not terribly satisfying. Oh. Um, so I, I, that was well, a real roller coaster, I, Darren. I know, I know. Well, that's why I almost am hesitant. I was hesitant even to even say it because, like, I look, they, they kind of had to probably, you know, do something when they, because they did know the show was going to end. Um, but it's he wakes almost, up in it, bed next to Suzanne Plachette. That's right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it was all a dream. Um, but um, uh, anyway, but, but back to this episode. Yeah. Like, it's so interesting, right? Because most of the time he accepts the computer's um, uh, odds of what he's supposed to do. But like, he's you're right. He's leapt into this moment when he can positively change um, his family's life, uh, all of them. And the computer's like, you're supposed to win a basketball game. And he has, for, for his character, uh, something we don't often see, which is this real crisis and confidence at some point where he's basically like, I, I, why do I help all these other people and not the people that I love? Um, and that is gut wrenching, you know, uh, and, and completely, uh, understandable. Like, I, I feel like as an audience member, you are with him a thousand, we don't care about a basketball game. And this is the one for which 
Bakula should have won the Emmy. He's playing himself. He's playing yes. his dad. And he's yes. playing himself as a 16-year-old. His physicality, there's a oh, whine man. in his voice that's yes. not I was gonna, natural. I was gonna, I'm glad, so glad you brought that up because I think that there's even a moment when he has a little, like a temper tantrum. Yes, and he, and he runs, runs through the off. cornfield and he's running like a gawky 16-year-old. Oh, it's 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 brilliant. Like it's it's a, it's like exactly, it's like that, it's a little cheesy, but it's exactly how a 16-year-old a pouting 16 year old would run off and and then he's he's actually good at his as his dad also like at first when i saw the makeup i was i was i was a little worried uh, about that performance but he, it's he underplays it um really beautifully he's a nice loving father who's a little old fashioned and a little stuck in his ways and but he's a good man and yes oh i was very moved and when you said it's a two-parter and you can watch the next part, and I thought, I'm definitely watching the next part. But then mm -hmm. he dropped into Vietnam, and I don't know if I can handle it. Do you want me to tell you anything? Yes. <laughs> I did. I did watch the next part because I couldn't. I had to. And I didn't yeah. remember exactly. So he drops um, into his brother? So, yeah. He, no. Leaps? No. So he drops oh. into his uh, – yeah, we should say leaps, I guess, for the yeah. real fans out there. That's what they're going to want to hear. Yes. That's what they're going to want to hear. proactive, too. He's not he, just yes. dropping in. He's exactly. leaping in. He leaps into his brother's uh, squadron okay. uh, as a friend of his brother's. Okay. Um, and he leaps in, I believe, one to two days before his April brother 8th. dies. Yeah. Mm. And obviously, that's a huge, there, you know, like you mentioned in this episode, part one, he's trying to save his dad. He's trying to, like, his, even his sister winds up in a, in a, in a bad marriage. Like, yep. But his brother is sort of like the main. Thing, because he gives up on the other ones, but he's really focused on right. his brother and that date. Um, and then at, right before he leaps, Al tells him, your brother still dies. Right. And then he leaps. And it's such a great, <laughs> you know, arriving. As soon as he arrives, they're like, you know, there's gunfire and he ducks into the marsh or whatever. And uh, yeah. yeah, they spared no expense. I mean, yes, I, I know they're not in Vietnam filming, but it really no, looks no, they went good to, and powerful. They actually time traveled to the Vietnam War, as I understand <laughs> it. They went back to Wow. Uh, so Vietnam they shelled out the for Imagine and they traveled back in time to Vietnam. <laughs> yeah. You know, budgets so in the early network 90s. Network money. Yeah. <laughs> it's real. Serious Ooh. stuff. I, I can't believe I had never seen this show. I think I would have genuinely loved it when it was on. Oh, yeah? At, as a kid. Oh, yeah. It's not about the technology and the time travel no. and the science. It is about these really human stories. Yes, it is. It's it, and like I said, social I issues and emotion. Yeah. I'm so, so glad I'm going to watch the JFK it. one for sure. Um, yes. But you should watch part two um, because it, it's, it will surprise. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it will surprise you um, with what they do with it. Like it's, it's really in interesting. Um, I'm getting like tearing up thinking about it. I just find it so hard to watch more. It is. And, yeah. Yes. Um, and it is, you know, obviously it's, it's, um, it's sort of a wonderful follow-up to that extremely personal, like through and through story. Cause now right. he's not himself anymore and he's not at home anymore, but obviously right. with him and his brother, um, who also was really good by the way, that actor, I didn't yes. recognize that actor, but yeah. He was great. Everyone. Um, yeah. Yeah. That episode was stellar. Are there puppies or musical numbers in the second episode? Puppies or musical numbers? I don't believe so. Oh, um, then I'm not going to watch is, it. Fair enough. The you know, reason I hesitated there was there definitely are puppies and musical numbers somewhere in Quantum Leap. I'm pretty sure there's an episode in which he leaps into an actor in a musical. Oh, um, that sounds right. I'm pretty sure that's the case. Yeah. And you know, it, what, also he leaps into women. Um right. several times. Um and you know, he leaps into um like uh like black men and um you know, in the civil rights era. So yeah, there there's there's all kinds of uh things that they explore. I just to circle back. I'm I'm glad to hear that you dug it. I also I went into this rewatch like mildly trepidatious um because it was so uh pivotal for me as a kid like i said I, there was no other show as a kid that i watched regularly um I, I know that it informed my sensibilities in terms of like history and time travel and a lot of storytelling um and you know it when you revisit those things 
often they don't hold up at all. Um, and though there were elements of this that were dated, um, I felt overall like I I personally would would you know would still like this show. Like yes. I, there are issues with it, but I'm like no no it still pulls at my heartstrings in the right way and my yeah it, you know my intellectual interests. Like it manages to do both imperfectly but wonderfully in a way that a lot of even the prestige tv shows that we like now they're also interesting and complex and mm -hmm. dark at times mm -hmm. but um i don't know there's something about the the heartfulness of this that i found refreshing to revisit also i'm so glad darren i would have felt really terrible if you said yeah <laughs> the rewatch made me realize it was schlocky or it wasn't as good as i thought so i'm thrilled that it held up and and still evoked those emotions for you well, me too. So look you at that. Owe, we both, you owe it all to me. <laughs> thank you, Mandy. Uh, and we both, we both, you know, are fans of Quantum Leap. So there you go. Yes. So your podcast, How to Destroy Everything, is where yes. people can hear you. Uh, anything else you want to tell the people? Where can they find it? Is there a website or is it just... Anywhere so you podcast. It is, yeah. So we're, uh, uh, as they say, it is available wherever you get your podcasts. Mm -hmm. um, uh, new episodes come out every Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we do have an Instagram at How to Destroy Everything. We also have a Patreon for those who want to uh, support the podcast, which is at patreon.com slash how to destroy. Let and me let me just let me just confirm that that's the actual Patreon. Please, while you do that, I'm going to do my business and tell everyone that Make Me a Nerd is a production of True Story FM, engineering by the peerless Pete Wright. The theme song is Wonderstruck by Jane and the Boy. You can reach out to me on socials at Mandy underscore Kaplan underscore Clavens, both with K's. If you're listening on Apple Podcast, please, please, please. Leave a five-star review, write a review. It helps get more eyes and ears on the podcast, and it helps me to grow. I already told you how to become a member. Please consider doing that, too. And you can also become find me. Become a member, me. folks. Come on. Yeah. And you can find me on Discord as well. More ways to connect and discuss these wonderful properties that we're talking about. So it was it was patreon.com slash how to destroy everything. I think I just said how to destroy, but how to destroy everything. The whole Fancy. the whole title basically. All right. Should I be and on then, Discord? Is that a thing that I should do? I don't know. <laughs> what do you what do you do on Discord? I don't you even know. You talk to people. People can, oh. you know, hey, I listened. The other episode you should watch is this, or I disagree. Your your opinions oh. are stupid. And I'm like, stop it, mom. You know, it's like whatever you want on Discord. Yeah. The That's podcast sweet. is now finishing ladies and gentlemen and everyone in between but for members only we're going to dive deeper into oh, how yes. to destroy everything so if you want to find out how that very cool sausage is made that's not a thing uh <laughs> you got to become a member make me a nerd.com slash join and you'll hear more with darren Gotsky. but for everyone else thank you for listening and oh i should know what i'm doing oh uh Blown Away, the glass blowing competition series on Netflix is coming up next. So mm. watch a few of those and join me next week on Make Me a Nerd.